Good afternoon. So new laws are being made all the time. And recently, the new laws that are on the front burner are abortion, vaccine passports or mandates, and, and mask mandates. And the way I see it, if I'm in favor of laws mandating that people wear masks, basically forcing people to wear masks, or forcing people to get a vaccine or any other medical procedure, then I'm also in favor of making abortion illegal. And vice versa, if I am against mask mandates, forcing people to wear masks, if I'm against vaccine, forcing people to get vaccines, then I'm also against laws outlawing abortion to restrict people's choice. That's the way it works. Why? If I vote, I'm giving my power to the government and saying, I want you to tell me and everybody else what to do. When I endorse and support a political party, a politician, a government to do things in the name of protecting me, I'm giving a government the power to tell everyone what to do. And maybe my guy's in there now, and I'm like, yeah, my guy's doing you know, the laws and telling people to do things that I want. But it's only a matter of time before the other guy, the guy I don't agree with, gets in there. And now that the power's there, they're going to use it. That's how the system works. And some people, you know, respond and say, no, 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 that's, that's not how it works. You know, your, your vote, your choice, no, we need to get out and campaign. That's why, you know, you can't stop voting. You got to get out and vote more, you know, often campaign, get everybody on this endless thing of, of getting our guy in there. We got to keep getting our guy in there. Well, that, that's been going on my whole life and I haven't seen that ever work. And I, I have no faith that that ever will work. You know, there's the cliche bumper sticker. If voting changed things, it would be illegal. Like for me, I had to look inside and, and ask myself, you know, am I being hypocritical? Are my views or what I say I'm in favor of, is it in opposition at some point? So, you know, how, how can I say I don't want the government to tell me to wear a mask or to tell me to get a vaccine, but then I want the government to tell other people what they can do with their bodies in a different situation, say abortion. You know, to me, that's a hypocritical stance. And a lot of people get in and justify it and say, no, no, it's not about that. I'm, I'm pro-life. I'm pro-this. I'm well, if we give the government that power, they're going to use it. So by enabling a government to outlaw abortion, you're, you're giving the government the power to force you to do some other thing you don't want to do or to stop you from doing something you want to do, as in go into a store without a mask or to get on a plane without a vaccine. It's the same ring of power, the same principle at, for, at work. And if, if we're against it, we have to be against it completely. If we're in favor of it, then we get what we, we ask for. You know, like the saying goes, we get it good and hard. So for me, what, what I see as the solution is to reclaim my power, to stop asking or seeking or looking to an external authority to like wave a magic wand and solve everything. Or with the stroke of a pen, they, they create a law or some legislation that's gonna magically make everything better. And, and I've never seen that work. And so for me, it's like, what can I do? How can I change? What decisions can I make in my life to improve my area locally and expand that outward? Instead of looking far away to say Washington and asking them to impose from the top down on everybody, I'm like, no, bring it home. I want, you know, the more local, the more I can see the person making decisions, especially if I'm looking in the mirror and make those decisions, the more control I have, the more authority, the more power I have to actually make a, a real change, a change that actually does some good. So like a simple way I look at that is, you know, one time there was a, a loud party next door at one of the houses I was living at and the people I was living with were like hey let's let's call the cops and tell them to go over there and shut that party down and I'm like why don't we just go over there and talk to our neighbors and ask them to turn the music down so that's what I did I you know leaned over the fence hey how's it going you know my the people I'm with they, they think the music's kind of too loud they're trying to sleep can you can you turn it down is that okay you know and they did, problem solved, didn't have to get anybody else involved. And I made a connection with my neighbor, able, you know, something to build on to improve relations in the future. So that maybe next time they're having a party, they come over and invite us or they say in advance, hey, we're gonna have this party, it's gonna be loud, is that okay? Or can you, you, know, can you come over or maybe make plans to go somewhere else? And then, so to me, that's community building and a way to do that. And the reason I prefer to do it that way is when I was growing up and I had parties, somebody, my neighbors would call the cops and then we'd get a visit from the cops instead of getting a visit from the neighbors. And it was, a, you know, it's a, not a good experience. It didn't feel good to be kind of narked on and have all of a sudden the cops show up and start hassling us. That wasn't fun. To take the 911 analogy even further, you know, if I'm giving the power to the authorities to come and, and bust people or shut down, say, music, 
Well, then the next time somebody's growing, say, plants in their backyard. Now, I've, now they come and they shut down the plants or they take those people to jail and then on and on it goes. Once the power is there, it's going to be used and there's going to be all kinds of you know, power expansion, more and more reasons to call the police for everything and have people get visited by this external authority. And the more power this authority has, the more likely they are to use it for nefarious purposes. If we don't want, say, the police showing up at our house or, the, or some representative of the government saying, you know, you need to turn down the music or you need to get rid of those plants or you need to get a vaccine, we're here to vaccinate you or, you know, we're here to stop you from having an abortion or say, hey, your, your skin color is too dark for this neighborhood, so we're here to take you away. I mean, the whole reason groups like, say, the Black Panthers started is because they had no one to call. They couldn't call the police and actually get help. If they called the police, they got shot or they got beat or they got killed. If that system of external authority was just, no one would join the Black Panthers. They couldn't get any members. No one would ever heard of Martin Luther King or Malcolm X. There'd be no reason. We wouldn't need civil liberty leaders and people speaking up and out against injustice. You know, and people often point to the tools even. They say, oh, we need to you know, get rid of guns, assault rifles, and all this and that. Well, nobody would want to buy an assault rifle. They wouldn't need one if the system was just, if they trusted the government and the police and the authorities, whoever they are, to act inclusively and to have their best interests at heart. At heart. Nobody would need that stuff. You wouldn't need it. You know, and to take that further, people often make fun of an militias. It's like these people in, you know, fatigues and nut jobs and wackos and all this. Well, the only reason people join groups like that is that they feel like they're on the fringe, that they're not welcome, they're not included, they're not going to get a fair and representative stake in the system of power. You know, they, they see the just us system as, as an unfair thing that's, that's out to, to take their stuff away and, and to... to you know, to do like they did to the Branch Davidians at Waco, you know? So if you want to, like, stop these groups or stop, you know, these kind of, like, mass shootings and stuff, well, we need a more fair and inclusive system. That's the recipe. You know, address the root cause. As long as we try to annihilate the symptoms of injustice by, or, you know, these things that happen, like mass shootings and, and, and you know, groups acting, say, violently or coming together to do nasty things, well, the reason they're doing that is because they don't have any other choice. They don't feel like they're, they're, you know, they're outraged by the system and there's nowhere to take that. The system isn't listening. The majority isn't listening. So the only thing that people can hear is some like crazy, violent, gnarly thing. That's why they do it. To get the attention of people who aren't listening, who won't pay any attention to them, who won't hear their cries for help. You know, so for me, the alternative to this madness we have of, of uh, this war of all against all is, is to stop looking outside, looking far away and giving our power away to an external authority that's proven that it's going to be unjust is to reclaim our power and to look to each other, to turn to each other, to put down the phone instead of dialing 911 and going across the fence and talking to our neighbor, you know, reaching out, building bridges, coming back together forming a local bond and a local system that actually takes care of each other. So thanks for watching.